Hey everyone, I'm Cece. Now, on the surface, it may seem that there is little in common between the three pictures behind me on the screen. Three women, and yes, I'm sure you can all recognize one of them. The actress Margot Robbie playing the Barbie role in the recent Barbie movie. But what about the other two? Well, one is the woman I met in Jiangyong County in Hunan Province, China. And the other one is someone who is really close to my heart. Her name is Julie, and she is my mom. Now, I want to start by telling you a little bit more about this extraordinary woman, my mom. Born in a rural village where baby girls were often abandoned and left to die, my mother defied the odds. While her own father didn't choose to kill her and ensure her survival, my mother encountered another scene. When the time came for my mother to marry according tradition, yeah, it's common for parents to arrange marriage for their own kids in that rural area. My mother boldly refused. He left her, left her home and her community. She fearlessly felt a new life. She made her way to Shanghai. She qualified as a teacher and embarked on a career. She fell in love and married my dad over there and raise me. Now, my mother's journey mirrors the resilience of countless women worldwide who persist in the face of adversity. Her story connects us to the extraordinary He Yanxing, the last successor of Jiang Yong Nu Shu, the only written language created by and for women. When I first discovered Nu Shu, I was fascinated by its beautiful and elegant characters. I was wondering, who created this beautiful invention and why? So I traveled to Hunan and meet this, oh, and meet this lady, Granny Yanxing. She told me that when she was young, women were denied education. So they use Nu Shu to communicate with each other and express their struggles as sisters. From as young as four, they started to practice Nu Shu, tracing the characters their grandmother drew on their palms. As they grew, they used ash water as ink and their legs, their knees as desk, writing while cooking. Granny Yanxing told me the harsh reality behind the creation of Nu Shu. She said, after marriage, husband beat us. Mother-in-law scorned us. We lived in tears every day, writing to console each other. She sang me the hunting Nu Ge, one of their few ways to express their strugglings and their sadness. However, she rarely sings those songs anymore. The melody revived deep sorrows, and at her age, she has few teeth left. Indeed, Nu Shu isn't just a writing. It's an entire culture of resistance. Granny Yanxin told me that when she was young, she couldn't understand the plight of women. She could only remember her grandmother shedding tears whenever she picked up a pen. Indeed, when the world denied them education, they create Nu Shu. Women struggling is always presented, and the only one who can liberate women are women themselves. Despite the progress we've already made towards gender equality, the struggle of women are never over. Now, it might be a little bit stretch 
to jump from the rural county of Hunan province in China to the ultra bright pinkness of Barbie. But I think a lot of you guys down, especially women audience, would be able to relate to the speech in the Barbie. It is literally impossible to be a woman. Like, we have to always be extraordinary, but somehow we are doing it wrong. You have to be sin, but not too sin. And you can never say you want to be sin. You have to say you want to be healthy, but also you have to be sin. You have to be a boss, but you can never be mean. You have to lead, but you can never squash other people's idea. You can never get old, never show fear, never show off, never be selfish, never fall, never fall down, never get out of the line. It is too hard. I don't know what you all feel about these words, but I strongly resonate with them. I enjoy taking on all the leadership roles, but I'm afraid of being called as an aggressive girl. I enjoy talking about women's issue, but I'm afraid of being called as a feminist. I want to speak up for the minority groups, but I'm afraid of being overwhelmed by the public voices. And moreover, even when we are already so careful Life isn't always smooth sailing. I carefully prepared a birthday gift for my best friend, only received an apology. Oh, sorry, I forgot on oh, my own birthday. I took on the majority of the work in a group project, only got to be criticized with, oh, she's too bossy. I gathered the courage to speak up for a women's issue, only be criticized with, you're too radical. And guess what? In the end, all these negative emotions have to be swallowed alone because others will only think you're too sensitive. It's too hard, too contrary. And no one will give you a medal or say, thank you. But you know what? I'm so tired. I'm so tired of watching myself and every single woman in this world to tie herself into knots so other people will like us. In my talk today, I want you to look around and see what's going on in our societies. I want you to be grateful to your moms and your sister and support your female friends. I want you to be proud of Granny Yanxin and the invention of new Shu. I want you to give yourself a medal and say thank you. I want you to remember that no one can define you. No one can tell you what a woman should be like. And most importantly, I want you to all love yourself and do anything you want. It is literally impossible to be a woman. You're so beautiful and so smart, and it kills me if you don't think you're good enough. Thank you.